Hello everyone and welcome to the Los Angeles Open Series. I'm Glenn Jones and I'm joined by Jonathan Joe. How are you doing, man? I'm doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. Alright, well you came with a pretty unique deck. Uh, it plays a lot of cards that we've seen before in Pro Tour winning decks, if right. anyone happens to recall. Uh, you've got Master of Waves, you've got Thassa, you've got your Frostburn Waves, you've got your Night Vale Spectres. Nothing, nothing too unusual to see there. Uh, but you've put all of this into an Esper shell that looks uh, basically like a hybridization of the Mono Blue Devotion deck and Esper Control. Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, it basically, it all stemmed from my absolute love of drawing cards. And <laughs> I really wanted to put Nykthos in the deck with Sphinx's Revelation. And I was trying to figure out how to do that. And so we started with the Mono Blue shell just because it's the best way, obviously, to draw cards is in the blue. And we started out with tinkering with a little bit of white and there and there. And we found that we were still running into a little bit of problem matchups. Uh, we had four detention spheres in there, but that sometimes that just wasn't good enough when you were dealing with the Planeswalkers. Sure. And so we decided to just throw in the black in there for a little bit of thought seize and a little bit of spot removal out of the board to help you deal with Mistcutter Hydra. Oh, okay. I, I like the detention sphere. Obviously, the mono blue deck had basically no removal, right? It had like right. Tidebinder Mage for red and green creatures, right. and that's it. Uh, and you are actually, you know, with four detention spheres, can kill just about anything, especially yeah. a lot of the threats that are plaguing people in this one. Very much so. Very much so. Okay. Uh, and you mentioned Thoughtseize. I'm actually a pretty big fan of that, too, mostly because I like the idea of playing Master of Waves and Thoughtseize together. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It's right? been, like, yeah, being able to clear the way or, like, you know, seeing, because, like, Master of Waves, while very powerful, is fragile in his own right, and the fact that, you know, sure. he dies, all the rest of his, his friends die with him. So actually being able to clear the way or just make sure that it's good, um, it just it's worked out really, really well. Okay, all right. Uh, well, shifting gears, the black gives you access to a lot of other stuff as well, obviously. Right. You're boarding some Doom Blades, Ultimate Presses, that kind of thing. Yep. Uh, that's, again, an option the Mono Blue deck just didn't have access to. So you can right. actually get those aggressive matchups, like, really under your thumb. You already had Frostburn Warrior, so I imagine it's those those decks are just walks in the park at this point. Pretty much, pretty much. The, the aggressive decks are just really easy. Uh, the thing that I love about it is the Mono Blue Mirror matchup is actually just incredibly easy. Just oh, sure. because of the fact that you have access to Thoughtsy, so you can see what their game plan is. And then with the Detention Spheres to deal with the Bidens, which, you know, most of the time changes the race a yeah. lot. And um, and then a lot of times you also kind of get into this little, like, top decking war, and I just think so is a top deck. <laughs> and, you know, they just they are not really there. They draw things like Coffin Raptor, which just doesn't exactly cut yeah. the mustard. Yeah, all the cards in your deck, you have all the cards that are good in their deck, in your deck as well, and then where they have things that are a little... Uh, Right. We've actually replaced it with real magic cards. Exactly. Like tide, the Tidebinder Mages and Cloudburn Raptors, you have, you know, the Spears and, and whatnot, like right. you said. Okay. Uh, another act, option that Black has given you is a card Shine Serrani's kind of panned recently, <laughs> but you're sideboarding three copies, and that's Ashiok Nightmare Weaver. So first off, what was Ashiok's role in the deck, and do you still like it? Uh, the or reason him. Ashiok was really in the deck originally was um, because when we played against Mono Black, we determined that when we originally tried to do it, we tried to move into more of a controlish Esper type build, and that really just wasn't working out for us. That's just kind of what the deck is designed to just be. And then so we decided that we wanted to become as much as threat dense as possible. Okay. And uh, basically, you know, the first turn you use Ashiok, if you're lucky enough to hit a Desecration Demon, you can immediately slam it into play, which will help you deal with their Desecration Demons. And then on top of it, just actually, just, you know, limiting their threats, like just by milling them here and there, and they really just don't have a good answer to it. Like, you know, other than trying to attack it with stuff like that, yeah. when you have your own Detention Spheres and Wrath of Gods and stuff like that, it just makes it so much easier to defend. Sure. The Black Deck definitely wants to play a bit of a longer game, and you're, right. you're built to draw it out. The problem is that when you get to the long game, the Black Deck's actually the one who's probably going to win. Exactly. But with Ashiok on your side, you actually have a way to steal their creatures, generate more threats. Exactly. Okay, I like it, I like it. Yeah, we actually uh, won a game against Mono Black when he was at uh, four, and uh, <laughs> I uh, hit him with a Night Vale Spectre. I put an Undivided World Connections on my uh, land, and then I used Ashiok to put a Grey Merchant into play, yeah. and I actually killed him that way, where I actually got him for five with Devotion. <laughs> It was just kind of an interesting way to win. Very nice. Uh, all right. Well, how have you done in the standard open so far? Um, right now, I just picked up my second loss, unfortunately. Um, I just, you know, I knew Miss Cutter Hydra was going to be a problem coming into the day. Sure. And it just, um, a, playing against Mono Green, I ended up in a board position where I like Master or Green Red, not Mono Green. And I Master Waves out, and I was feeling real confident about it. And uh, I had a Detention Spear in my hand, and he just, did, they did the big red green thing there. Got cut. Yeah, where he just, he, <laughs> he, he had no cards in hand. He drew for his turn. And he, I, I, I think he actually generated 16 mana off of Nithgos <laughs> with like two of the guys and stuff. And then he's just like, yep, Miss Gunner Hydra for 15. Getcha. 
I'm just kind of standing there. I'm like, yep, that card's really good. I just didn't happen to draw one of my Doom Blades or my ultimate prices, unfortunately. So. Well, uh, you're still competing for top 16 finish. And yeah. I'm sure you'll be tuning this deck a little bit more. After all, yeah. you've got a Las Vegas Invitational coming up. Got an not Invitational too, coming up. Uh, the GP in Albuquerque, I think I'm, I'm going to take yeah, something okay. like that as well. Um, if I was to tune it a little bit more, um, the Oshiak, while good, I think if we're going to go more threat dense, uh, possibly, I'm probably going to try and find some ways to put Blood Baron in the sideboard. As well as, um, right now I have the big 5 drop Jace, and um, against the monstrous red green deck, I really think because I have enough ground spell in the early game that the game kind of draws out. I have three um, Wrath of Gods in the main, and I really think I want to try and find room for two Elspeths. Okay, interesting. That's certainly a threat. Yeah. <laughs> Qualifies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just because, like, it just did, we end up kind of in these weird board states where, like, I have a Thassa down, so they can't really attack through it, and a Night Veil Spectre, and, like, Master of Waves, so they've got a bunch of Chumpers. And the, the beauty that, uh, about the reason I kind of thought of it in reverse was when I was building the deck, I was like, you know, I love the deck because Elspeth does nothing to it. Like, great. I make I make three one ones, And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm playing four Jaces Master, in the main, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I have Master of the Waves, and, like, actually, it just doesn't kill any of my creatures. And so I unfortunately didn't play test them for the tournament, and I didn't put it on the flip side, where it was, oh, well, I can play Elspeth because it actually has no negative impact on my deck. All right. Uh, well, so. I look forward to seeing the evolution of this build. Uh, good luck in the remaining rounds of the standard. Thank you, Glenn. Yeah.